I knew nothing about elephants. I mean, I seen them in the zoo as a kid and seen them on television and things like that. And to be honest, 10 years after I'd been in, in Bali, I didn't even know Indonesia had an elephant. Nigel Mason now has a passion for elephants. His elephant safari park in Bali is home to 17 elephants, previously rescued from Sumatra. He is now planning to return to Sumatra to save 10 more. We're going to be going up there to rescue another 10 elephants and bring them down here to join their, their cousins down here in Bali. In a major rescue operation, Nigel plans to relocate 10 elephants over 3,000 kilometres, crossing three Indonesian islands from Sumatra to Bali. There are going to be six days and nights on the road with these, these animals, and uh, whew, you know, who knows what we'll strike along the way. It's going to be pretty hard. It's, it's, a, it's a difficult trip at best of times, but this is going to be even more difficult. There are approximately 400 elephants held in captivity on the island of Sumatra. They're in half a dozen different camps throughout Sumatra where they're, uh, they're being held uh, because they've become a, a pest to local farmers and people who are growing uh, plantations. There are some left in the wild, but uh, nobody really knows how many. There's probably all together in Sumatra maybe a, you know, a thousand plus elephants. And given five years, there'll be no forest left, and who knows what's going to happen to them. It's, it's pretty sad. Ini ya, jam berapa mereka biasa dilepas di hutan ini? Kalau dilepas jam 8 pagi. Nigel has sent his park manager, Deddy Rumlin, on to Sumatra to select ten new elephants. Apa kabar? Besar gajinya? There are forty elephants here and in, in captivity and 30 and still in the wild. So total 70 elephants here. The condition of the training center right now, the Bihanas Tello is very bad. It's not good enough to look after the elephant. There is no, no good food, yeah. no, not enough medical treatment. The conditions here are similar to the other five training centres operating on the island of Sumatra. Elephants are heavily chained and exhibit noticeable signs of distress. If the price isn't coming, it's not enough water to, to uh, give elephant bath, yeah, and this is very sad. Back in Bali, preparations are underway for the arrival of the new elephants. When the elephants get here, we can't exactly uh, mix them with the other elephants straight away. They need to go through a number of tests, such as blood tests, uh, uh, feces tests, things like that, to make sure that they're not bringing any parasites or any diseases uh, or things down to, uh, to, to mix in with these elephants, because these elephants are in beautiful condition, and we wouldn't like to spoil that just for the sake of it, a week or two of quarantine. After running his own landscape business in Australia, Nigel came to Bali in 1980 for a holiday. A couple of old hippie friends were, were doing jewellery over here and they said, oh, why don't you come to Bali for a trip? And I said, oh, that's a great idea, OK. Where's Bali? <laughs> I really didn't have any intentions of staying in Indonesia, um, let alone Bali. But I, I suddenly discovered something that I didn't know existed. His destiny was sealed when he met Yani. Before they were married, Nigel decided to convert his religious faith to Hindu, undergoing a life's course of ceremonies in just one day. Until now, he always remembers that uh, the six-month ceremony is supposed to be the first time you touched the ground, so to speak, and then he was put in the chicken basket and grown up man like him, you know. <laughs> so I look pretty ridiculous, but it was really a beautiful ceremony. I'll, I'll never forget it. Together, Nigel and Yanni raised two boys, 
while living above their restaurant business in Kuta. It was very hard in those days because there, you know, there, wasn't, uh, there wasn't the tourism there is now. There weren't a lot of people around, so you had to really work hard to get those people into your restaurant. I used to go out, walk down the street every day with a little monkey on my shoulder, sort of handing out brochures to people and saying, you know, come and have a meal at our restaurant. It was, it was pretty difficult. Their lives changed in 1990 when they started a rafting business on the Aeyong River. It was the first of its kind in Asia. We were actually quite surprised. We thought it would be busy, but it, it far surpassed any expectations we had. So from that, we wanted to expand on, and we started mountain cycling and trekking through the rice paddies and jungle trekking, you know, things that sort of blended together with the rafting. A few years later, Nigel came up to a little village in the hills where he came across an unusual business venture. There were these nine elef elephants standing out in the middle of a sort of dried out rice paddy in a pretty scungy sort of environment. But I looked at it and thought, I, I think I can do something with this. Since then, Nigel has rescued eight more elephants from Sumatra. His park is now one of the biggest tourist attractions in Bali. What the park is, is an elephant experience. You come here, you can see them, you can touch them, you can hand feed them, you can stroke them, you can even ride them. I mean, it's, it's a, a, a place where you come to find out about the Sumatran elephant. Who's the lucky ones today? Because in India, they say if an elephant throw water to you, that means a good luck. Oh, Yay! <laughs> Which way? Okay, no more water. I think they've got wet enough. Stop, stop, stop. It doesn't look like you, Jangan. Yeah. Look, back, back. After witnessing the elephant's plight in Sumatra, Nigel and Yani were compelled to start the Sumatran Elephant Foundation. Proceeds are raised from the park to help support elephants in the wild. Ecotourism can help sustain the elephants in the wild by raising money and funds to, you know, buy off forest lands or, or buy food or create awareness in, in a number of different ways to make sure that the elephants can survive in at least you know, one or two little pockets of, uh, of forest that could be kept away from the loggers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of the elephants at the park have taken up painting to help the cause. It's a bit like sort of more uh, abstract art, but it's surprising how much fun they get out of it, and it's surprising how different each painting comes out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. art has gathered a cult following around the world. We've uh, sold many of these paintings now uh, through Christie's in New York, many were auctioned, and we sell them through the internet. And we now use that money to accumulate it, to put it into projects into Sumatra, so that the elephants actually, by doing their paintings, are helping their brothers and sisters and cousins in Sumatra. <laughs> the elephant population in Sumatra is rapidly decreasing due to large-scale deforestation. What remains of the original forest of Sumatra now probably isn't even 10 per cent. And uh, it's diminishing at such a rate that these elephants are just running out of habitat. They're now going through cultivated lands, destroying crops and things like this. So they, des they damage the oil palm and then they just eat crops, so many crops, and then people get angry, try to kill that elephant. And that's, that's the problem we, we face now. May 2002, yeah, the accident in the border area 1711 did with the poison. With no easy solution, forestry officials have been forced to capture the elephants and hold them in training centers. 
you can only say that these are elephant concentration camps. They're not, they're not parks, they're not reserves, they're just places where elephants are kept in limbo, waiting to either die or someone to rescue them. Yang paling besar saya lihat gajah ini yang betina. Betina. Siapa nama ini? Ini Mutiara. Mutiara. At the besar elephant training center, ya? Tinggi, ya? Daddy is faced ini with the awkward task of deciding which elephants will come Mutiara. to die. Berapa umur Mutiara, Pak? Kira-kira 21, Bang. 21? Ya, 21 tahun. Oh. Mutiara was captured 14 months ago. She is just one of the 40 elephants here at the camp whose fate rests with Daddy. I'm sorry we, we can't take all the elephants from the elephant training center here because 27 elephants is like, you know, there's no place, it's very full now, there's enough for 27 elephants. So we can't, we can take more, so, more elephant well, to Bali. Uh, Daddy's soft spot for elephants began when he was a boy, growing up on his family's farm in Aceh. There, he witnessed his father kill many elephants in order to protect the land they lived off. It was very hard to me because I was uh, about eight years old at the time and uh, I can't decide anything so I just follow the, my father's rules. So if my father say something I have to follow him so you know I have no power. I feel very sorry at what my father have done to the elephant. I just say that's payback you know to take care of them. So this one, we're going to take her to Bali, yeah? Fatima, it's good condition. With nine out of ten elephants chosen for the journey, Daddy is introduced to the final member of his new team. Oh, bagus sekali Rizky. Hello Rizky. Oh, hey. Risky was abandoned by her mother when their herd was chased away by local farmers. Unable to keep up, Risky was left behind. I've never seen the baby elephant like this before. See the, uh, the skin is getting loose. If the Risky is staying with the mother, the skin is very tight. Yeah, come with me to Bali, yeah? I will look after you. Okay? We will look after you, Whiskey and Bali, no worries. Okay? Good girl. Meanwhile, in Bali, Sang Wong gives Nigel a hand to finish the new quarantine area. Okay, you should do it. Yeah, should do it. San Wong is one of the original elephants Nigel rescued from Sumatra, along with his mahout, Jimmy. Each elephant has their own mahout, who is responsible for their elephant's well-being. Hey Wong, good job mate. Good boy. There you go, it's a bit of, bit of a snack for you. Nigel is now ready to fly to Sumatra to meet up with Daddy and bring home the elephants. You're going to have some new mates soon, aren't you, mate? Good boy. The events of October the 12th, 2002, would change Bali forever. The once peaceful island was now another victim of global terrorism. Well, actually, we were in bed. We had a phone call from Yanni's niece, who uh, was actually at the shop down in Kuta Square when the bomb went off. And uh, she said, oh, the bomb's gone off at Sari Club. And all the windows have shattered in the shop, two, you know, two shops down from our shop. Um, and we're, you know, we're one kilometre away from, uh, from the blast, so we thought, my God, it's... 
it's just got to be very serious, you know. We never anticipate things like that could happen in Bali. You no, heard about the no. bombing, the hijacking, the you know other things in other part of the world, but Bali all this time we saying, "Oh, Bali is safe," and it was so shocking for me. You know, it's this for real. Meanwhile. Balinese shop owners prepared for what would be a devastating blow to their tourism trade. This whole area relies on tourism. Without tourism, it just doesn't exist. When I first came here in 1980, there wasn't, you know, there was nothing here. This was all rice paddies. That whole street, even where Surrey Club was, was just rice paddies. And, and of course, the, the people are the innocent victims of this. They, they didn't do this. Despite the impact this will have on Nigel's business. He becomes even more determined to bring the elephants down from Sumatra. As far as the uh, the elephants are concerned, nothing's changed. This doesn't change my mind at all. A, a bomb isn't going to stop us bringing the elephants down from Sumatra. We committed ourselves to this, and uh, you know, we look down here and see this. This is dreadful, and it certainly will affect tourism, you know, in, in a devastating way. But it won't affect our trip to the elephants. A few weeks behind schedule, Nigel finally leaves for Sumatra. Well, here we go, Operation Jumbo. Thank you. Thank you. The only concern for Nigel is that the permits authorising the elephant's release have not yet been signed. Without the permit completed, which it's sort of in its last stages of uh, being done, we could, you know, we could strike a problem with that. I'm hoping that that'll all clear itself up by the time we get there. Guys, everything all right? All right. So, how are the elephants? The baby is called Risky, it's poor condition. A little bit poor. It's skinny uh, because the baby is still sucking the milk from the mother. But what about the other baby? She's good too? The other baby is, is quite good. She's a bit older. It's got mm. older, it's uh, two and a half years old. Yeah. And that baby we just took from the Sabanga. Yeah, that was yeah. the orphan down there. From yeah. Sabanga. Yeah. How old is she, Daddy? Uh, Yanti is, is about 14 years 14, old. 14, yeah? Yeah. Just good eyes. Yeah, good eyes. Hide it and hide <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah, she's lovely, isn't she, hey? Oh! oh. oh. ah! <laughs> <Don't> hide it. <laughs> right. This is risky, yeah? Risky, one and a half years old. Risky is, uh, means... Lucky. Lucky, yeah, because she was saved. Is it? It's getting better now. It's, uh, yeah, she's, yeah, she's still a little bit skinny, though. Yeah, she's a little bit skinny, more meat yeah. on her. Well, we're just about ready to go. The elephants are all in pretty good condition. We've got a little bit more work to do as far as a few vitamins, a couple of injections that uh, some of the elephants still haven't had. Uh, concerned a little bit about Risky. We're trying to feed her up as much as we can with as much uh, milk formula to get her as fit as possible for the trip. And we're about ready to go. Our problem at the moment, of course, is that we still don't have these permits. The permit's got to be signed off in Jakarta. Once that's done, uh, the, the local guy here will sign off his permit and there's nothing then to stop us going. Our frustration is at the moment, of course, that we don't have that and we're playing a waiting game. So we, we just got to just got to hold in here until we're ready to go. Kembali ke tempat ya. Oke, ini telepon sekarang ya. Oke, ya ya. The next day and still no news about the permits. Out at the elephant training center, Daddy is selecting the new mahuts to take to Bali. Senang itu kesempatan saya untuk merubah nasib. Merubah nasib di Bali ya. Siapa yang bilang? I just interviewed this uh, mahuts. Uh, his name is Sertio. Uh, he's looked after Fatima for two years in, in Minas. He just hoped in Bali he can change the, his life, you know. Uh, but what, what he got here is, is you know, is, is nothing he can improve his life. <clears throat> Although Risky's condition has improved dramatically over the past few weeks, 
Nigel is not sure whether she will survive the long journey to Bali. You know, we've got a six day trip on her, on her hands here and she's a bit skinny, you know, she's a little bit weak um, to what she should be if she was with her mother, if she hadn't uh, been orphaned, she'd be you know, quite a bit fatter than this. So my concern is that, uh, you know, she's healthy enough to make the trip. The problem is though, that if she stays here, the likelihood is that she'll die here. There's just not the care, not the, uh, not the facilities here to look after an elephant this young. So I suppose it's the chance we're going to have to take. Several days have passed and still no news about the permits. Finally, word comes through from Jakarta. It appears a change in government legislation was not passed on to the local authorities. To me, I'm just, I don't know, what can I say? Nigel's worst fears are realised. The journey is cancelled. We've spent a lot of money, we've, we've spent a lot of time, a lot of people have put, you know, many, many months, not just months, actually years, this, is, this process has been going on for a couple of years. Uh, it's terribly disappointing. We don't know how long this will take now. It could be weeks, months, it, it could be a year. I, uh, very emotional, I, I, I I just can't, can't put words to it anymore. I'm just devastated. Years of preparation appear to be for nothing. Nigel and his team must now return to Bali without the elephants. Months later, Risky died at the Elephant Training Centre. After the bomb, we had a 97% for the tourism in our business. So our funds just got depleted. I mean, we just, we just got eroded away until now we're working on a very, very shoestring budget. It's been a massive toll, financially, and a very emotional toll. Too. The drive out to the Elephant Training Centre reveals a stark contrast to what it was just two years ago. You know, I need to look around here to see what a dreadful environment this has now become. To think that this was once lush jungle, it's amazing. Look at this mess here. Ah, oh, ah, here we are. There's the elephants. There's Daddy. And there's the trucks. Fantastic. Well, it looks like we're pretty much on schedule. No idea is to get out here before nightfall. Out of the original 10 elephants chosen to go to Bali, only five remain. The two babies are dead, and the whereabouts of the other three are unknown. Maybe he's got the abscess a bit here. Yeah. But when we get the Bali, we can do uh, operation there. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Deddy had to choose another five elephants for the journey. 
a decision hampered by their weakening condition. In a perfect world, the elephants, of course, would be roaming free in the jungle, but it just isn't. Doris, here's Nigel. You know, to get them out of here and get them to Bali is, is going to save their lives, there's no doubt about that. These, these elephants here, no doubt whether we're around in five years, I think they'll all be dead. I, I don't think there's any hope for them. In the past two years, the local vet, Rennie, has witnessed the death of 27 elephants, including Risky. Sometimes I'm very sad because the elephant would prefer to be in the wild. But because of the situation, they have to be here. And here, we can't do much to improve their health. Whilst Rini and Daddy finalise the medical treatment, Nigel searches for a six-month-old baby elephant named Garlak, who has just arrived at the camp. Well, this little guy is not very well. Not very well at all. He's having a little sleep. He's got a very nasty cut in his leg here. Very nasty. Very nasty. This to me looks like a little risky all over again. The government authorities here in Riau province refuse Nigel's offer to take garlic to Bali. I think he'd be lucky if he lasts a couple of months, to be honest. I, I, I don't think he'll last much more than that. He, he might not even last a month out. You know, he's got sores and cuts on his leg. He's very undernourished. This little fat stomach doesn't actually show the true sign. That's just a bit of bloat in him, you know. And look at him here. He's sort of hidden around the back here amongst all the rubbish and garbage. I mean, what sort of a location is it for a beautiful little animal like this? Nigel's crew have just two hours to load the elephants before nightfall. The elephants will remain on the trucks for the entire journey, which could take up to six days. Well, putting an elephant on a truck is, is an unknown for them. So if we put them on the truck and then took them off and then tried to put them on again, there's no way they'd get on the second time. So it's, it's got to be a non-stop trip. We've got to make sure that we get them down to the absolute minimum amount of stress because that's very important for the animal's health. OK, so we've got one more to go. The last baby, yeah? Debbie is having second thoughts. The last time she was on a truck, she was taken from her mother. Come on, Debbie. In you go. Yeah. Good girl, good girl. There we go. It's all of them loaded up. All we've got to do now is sign all the permits and receive all the quarantine papers. Otherwise, we won't get off this island. Thank you. Thank you. With permits in hand, Nigel and his crew now embark on a journey both dangerous and uncertain. travel non-stop over 3,000 kilometres to reach Bali. Every day they're on the road, the elephants will each consume over 250 kilograms of food. We've got you know, a long, long way to travel through some of the you know, worst country, worst roads, and, and of course we've got to find food and water along the way which is hard. We're going through a drought-ridden part of Java, which is literally no water at the moment. And we've got to keep moving. I mean, once the trucks are full of elephants, our priority is to get them off those trucks as soon as we possibly can. So every day that they're on the trucks is a danger. The last thing they need is breakdowns like this one. 
but with some speedy roadside repairs, they're back on their way. into the journey, and so far, so good. The convoy stops at a small village for water. It is critical that the elephants have a constant supply. quite a spectacle, with hundreds of people turning out to see the elephants. This is very typical, but anywhere we stop we gather a crowd because these people just never see anything in their lives, so they love it. Yeah, they've never seen the elephant before, so it's very first time for them, it's very exciting. Four hours into the journey, and some of the drivers have pulled over for an unscheduled break. Which is the first truck to pull in here? That's what I want to know. To find the driver of the first truck. Yeah, go ahead, Daniel. Where are you, Daddy? In the front, Daniel. I'm slow down. About the twenty. Daddy, these trucks have all stopped and pulled into a side thing all by themselves. They just suddenly decided to stop here with no bloody permission from you or anybody. Yeah? These elephants are going to be dead by the time we get to Bali if we don't get this show on the road. They've got to work as a team. Well, jam berapa makan siang kita, jam berapa makan pagi, jam berapa makan malam. Yeah, kita briefing lagi. Listen, you are forestry guys. You should be in thinking about these elephants, not about your bloody stomachs. I'm thinking about the elephants, not about how hungry I am. My problem here is that it's okay now, the elephants are okay now, but two or three down, down, days down the track, how are they going to be? We, we are doing something that's never been done before. We're taking elephants on a much longer journey than we've ever done before. And these truck drivers don't seem to understand this, and they just think they can do whatever they like. It's bullshit. It really is. I'm getting very frustrated, and I'm getting very worried. These truck drivers have got to understand that they have to follow our instructions. And this has got to stop. And Daddy just doesn't seem to be capable of, of, uh, of pushing his authority onto them. This is incredible. Okay. We've got to get this sorted out right now. Yeah. It's not not easy, easy job, you know, to coordinate. Sometimes I feel, you know, very sorry for the elephant, but this is the first time to me it's very hard in my life to The convoy is now 24 hours behind schedule. They cannot afford any more delays. I have a meeting with the driver and the rangers. We will not stop tonight till tomorrow morning. We just uh, eat on the truck. We right now I'm very happy because Nigel said that uh, good words. I mean to make me feel strong.
five kilometres from the ferry now. We're just stopping here to uh, get ready for the crossing. We've caught up probably uh, at least 10 hours, maybe even 11, which is great news, fantastic, and great news for the elephants as well, because today, particularly, it's quite a sunny day, so it's quite hot for them, so we're having to wash them down continuously. Thank you. This ferry trip will take about uh, three hours, we hope. But we're not sure how long it'll take to get us on the ferry. That's often the hold up. But uh, with a bit of luck, we'll be able to get on fairly quickly and be on our way. For some of the Mahuts, like Sutio, this is the first time they have left their home island. I feel very happy to leave, but sad leaving my friends in Minas. We went through good and bad times together. Decks, Daddy gives the elephants some multivitamin injections. They have now been on the trucks for 48 hours. Yeah, the first time when we get them in the truck, some of them they're very cranky, but after 24 hour journey, they get used to it. And beside that, we give them uh, enough food and enough water and good washing, so they feel all right now. Since leaving the ferry, the convoy has made good progress traveling overnight through Java. However, the long journey has started to take its toll on Muktiara. blocking one lane of the main highway. Probably once the heat of the day comes up, she'll she'll get a bit uh, better. We've done some pretty you know pretty fast travelling through the night, and she's I think she's just the chilled night air's got to her a little bit, and she's just feeling a bit weak. This, these elephants are not in prime condition. Let's face it, they're you know, they're rescued elephants. We're trying to get them to a better place to make them healthy. This travelling in this condition is, is difficult to say the least, you know, and we, there's bound to be one or two of these sorts of things happen along the way where we've got to stop and let the elephant recover a bit of uh, uh, strength again. After a short break, Mutiara appears to be settling down. She is starting to eat again, which is a good sign. But I think one of the problems is, mate, that we need a bit of dry food for this animal. Uh, everything it's eating is banana and more banana. Can you see if you can uh, find some dry grass or some coconut leaf or something like that to give it? With the temperature starting to soar, the priority now is to find some water for the elephants. This will not be easy. Central Java is in the middle of a drought. Oh, I was asking him, where we can find the water. And they said about one kilometer from here, turn right. In the car wash. Several hours have passed and still no sign of water. 
Deddy has traveled ahead of the convoy to look for water. Hello? It appears Deddy has driven past three water sources without stopping. I didn't see it, Nigel. Once again, Deddy is in the bad books with Nigel. You see water? Yeah. I didn't see water. What's that yeah, water? Daddy. I said the water there. And the uh, left side, okay. Nigel saw water. I said, I didn't saw water, Nigel. So where, where, where are you going to stop? I said, in the car wash. Oh, bloody hell. Nigel has managed to stop two of the trucks to resupply the elephants with water. However, in all of the confusion, the convoy has split. Daddy, where are you? OK, we've lost two trucks have shot off again without stopping. Are you, are you still going? OK, stop and stop those two bloody trucks now, yeah? Stop the things, they're out of control, they just disappeared again. OK, as soon as you see them, pull them over the side of the road, OK? OK. It's just insane, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you see a truck? No. I don't see a truck, any. Yeah, I feel, um, oh, 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 Nigel has finally caught up with Deggy, who still has no idea where the missing trucks are. Gone straight past three perfectly good water sources, which you guys haven't even seen. We had two trucks with us and the pump, and you've flown on ahead with the other two trucks and totally missed perfectly good source of water within three meters of the bloody asphalt. Then I not tell you before, keep the trucks together. In the last six hours, the crew have only managed to travel 45 kilometers. Okay. That's how it is from now on, right? I'm in the front in this bus, right? You still go ahead as before to change cars. You get in the Taruna, so I've got communication with you at the back. If you have any problems at the back, your immediate radio may hear. This convoy has to stay together. Yesterday was so perfect, absolutely perfect. It all ran like clockwork. We've already lost the 12 hours we're going, and we're without water, and now we've lost two trucks of elephants just to, just to make it worse. Even the tiniest trickle from a garden hose is a welcome relief for the elephants. Hi, Hi sweetheart. Everything's turned to shit today. Everything's turned to absolute crap. Your brother... While Nigel vents some of the day's frustrations, Yanni has some disturbing news. Oh, in Jakarta? Oh, yeah? A bomb in the Australian embassy in Jakarta. How bad? Oh, for God's sake. I've just had a phone call from Yanni who said, get out of Java as quick as you can. There's a bomb just gone off in the Jakarta embassy, the Australian embassy in Jakarta. She doesn't know what's happened, how many injured or how bad it is yet. I've asked her to get on the news on CNN and uh, get back to us as quick as possible, let us know. Nigel decides to keep moving until they find a better water source. The missing trucks still haven't been located. Get ahead of yes, Daddy. We found the yes. Yeah, we found the two trucks. We ran to the other side of it. Ran the other yeah, side yeah, of it. We've got to stop them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my boss! This convoy should be Bali Adventure. Truck, 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 truck. Bali Adventure. Itu aja. Jangan diterus sendiri, tak bisa. Karena ter, kalau bisa-bisa ini, Pak, sulit. Kita Itu satu komboi, harus semua sama. Harus sama. Kita perintah jalan, baru jalan semuanya. Jalan sedikit-sedikit. Saya pusing atur begini terus, Pak. Kita Saya pusing dari... With no water in sight, 
Nigel had to buy all the bottled water in the village to resupply the elephants. On the way, I'm happy we've got water, but I'm far from happy about today. This has been a disastrous day 45 kilometres and half a day gone. And that's ridiculous. I could have almost walked that much. But the trucks are now following that hopefully we can finally hit the road with a vengeance. At a truck stop in southern Java, news of the Jakarta bombing dominates the headlines. It's now quite clear there was a car bomb that went off at 11 o'clock this morning outside the uh, Australian Consul. There's uh, so far eight people dead and uh, up to 100 people have been uh, injured in various forms. That's, I mean, it's terrible, very, very sad. Day, the crew are well on their way to the southern tip of Java. This will be the last stop. We'll stop us direct to Bali Island. It's so very exciting. So um, I dream to come to Bali as soon as possible. So, uh, you know, all the responsible in my shoulder will be finished. So I'm very happy, I tell you. That afternoon, the elephants reached the ferry crossing to Bali. relief but of course the final uh, feeling of total uh, success will be when we get to the park. I, I won't be happy until these elephants are at the park, off the trucks and into their new home. That's, that's the most important thing now. It is now two o'clock in the morning. The elephants can finally come off the trucks after having endured over 100 hours on the road. Mutiara is one of the first elephants to test the ramp that was constructed over two years ago. 
Congratulations, everybody. We were told it would take seven or eight days, but we made it in four days and six hours. I'd like to thank all of you for your cooperation, all your help. Thank you very much, and congratulations. It's a wonderful feeling. I just feel, a, I suppose, a sense of relief that it's all over and that we've finally got these 10 animals to Bali. Pandi. Welcome to your Pandi. new home, Debbie. Hey. Mana orang yang... <laughs> Good girl. Okay, guys, let's go. Yep. Fatima. After a few weeks of quarantine, the elephants were eventually brought into the park. This is it. This is the last 10 elephants to Bali for us. Now we've got to uh, get into a breeding program and start and try and uh, you know, get our own elephants born at the park to, uh, uh, to, uh, to assure some future for, for those and keep this herd here uh, going forever. I like it here di sini, because it feels like a natural hutan, environment. Hutan buatan, si Even though it's only Padahal a human created forest, it's beautiful and quiet. Well, my hope with this uh, arrival of these elephants in Bali is that it will bring more awareness to the fact that there is a major problem in Sumatra that needs to be looked at and acted on before it's too late. To be honest, tell you, I don't want to see like this. Um, we want uh, for the future, my grandson can see the elephant, can touch the elephant. Fire and burns I'll never learn Toss in a time. 